Hello again, America. It's me, your little ray of sunshine, Evan Grant, Dallas Morning News, DallasNews.com. Your, I hope, really, I hope at this point in time, we've developed a strong and lasting relationship. So I hope I am your Texas Rangers insider and that you are here for this week in Rangers baseball, y'all. I have got some stats here for you. I know that's what you come here for is the numbers or my personality. Um, but before we get to that, please, this week is going to be all about starting pitching. So if you need to hide the children, do that now. Um, if you need to get a glass of wine, if you are of an appropriate age, you may do that. But also before you do anything else, or after you do this, please, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, I'm I'm begging you, because um, I have no shame. I'm just a middle-aged man trying to make a, a way on, on the YouTube world. So subscribe to the channel, like the video, send me some comments. I know last week I was a little shoddy on, on getting back to some comments. Long weekend in Boston didn't have a whole lot of uh, uh, opportunity to respond, but I'll, I'll do better on that. But this week... It is starting pitching, starting pitching, and starting pitching. We're, we're going to take a look at where this club is starting pitching-wise as the 2022 season winds down. And I'm going to be doing a lot of writing about this over the final three weeks of the season. Uh, if, you, if you are a fan of the written word, and, and I hope some of you are, I uh, wrote a column on Sunday about the state of of this rotation this year. And then on, uh, on Tuesday night in uh, Houston, uh, wrote about Martin Perez and let's start there. Cause that's the bright spot. And you always want to hit him with a high note, right? Hit him with a high note. So Martin Perez is obviously the bright spot this year. Um, a brilliant sign, uh, bargain at $4 million, but here's the deal. The Rangers have gotten to the point where they, need multiple starters going into next year. Um, Martin Perez, at this point, will become a free agent at the end of the year. He stayed here after the trade deadline. There wasn't an offer the Rangers felt was was worthy of, of dealing him. And so now he's here. He's finishing off a really strong year, really strong start against Houston on, on Monday night. Um, and it's, it, I, I think the situation has changed a little bit from Martin necessarily. I think he still wants to stay here, and he told me that. He still very much wants to stay here. But listen, now the need on the Rangers' part is significant. Uh, and I think that's put a lot more leverage in Martin's hands. The Rangers are now going to have to meet a Martin Perez asking price. I don't know if that will change um, necessarily the years uh, on his deal. But I certainly think that if you were talking about getting Martin Perez for $13 million a year or $12 million a year over three years, uh, three months ago, now I think you're having to look much more at the the John Gray average value, which was $15 million a year that he signed um, this winter. Gray got four years. I still think that Perez is probably, since he's going to be 32 next year, he's probably looking at a three-year deal. But you're looking at, $15 million or perhaps a little bit above that, because quite frankly, he's, he's pitched better than Gray has. He's Perez is going to finish uh, providing he makes his, his final five starts, which I, I think he should. He'll finish above 180 innings this year. Uh, he'll finish with a career best in strikeout percentage. He'll finish with a 50 plus percent um, ground ball rate. Uh, every statistical indicator on Martin Perez's profile maybe suggesting this is a career year, but it's not a career year out of flukes. His ground ball rate has, has, has stayed true. His strikeout rate has gone up. His walk rate has stayed true. He's learned how to pitch and get outs, um, particularly via the strikeout when he most needs them. So uh, the need now is there for the Rangers to go and get that done. And, and they need to get that done Really, I'd say before the end of the World Series and before the free agent market opens, they need to have this locked away because if they don't have Martin Perez right now, I feel like this team has John Gray, who has something of an injury history. 
and nothing else that they can really count on. So you go into the offseason, you've got to get the Perez deal signed. So you've got Gray and Perez. Now, we'll get into what the Rangers need to do in the offseason. I'm still not prepared to, like, give you a bunch of names yet uh, on free agency because, quite frankly, it's been a hard enough time sorting through what the Rangers have going on here. But uh, in free agency, I would like to think that the Rangers would look for one guy to go ahead of Perez and Gray in the rotation, and one guy to slot behind them. And then what you end up doing is you have a fifth spot competition, perhaps, between Glenn Otto and Dane Dunning. There have been some bright spots for these guys this year, and there have been some down spots. But uh, let's start with Dunning, who was the more experienced guy coming into the year. And I feel like if there is one area in which the Rangers this year can point to and say, no, there was not progress, it's in starting pitching development, whether that's at the big league level or at the upper 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 levels of the minor league. Dunning has to be kind of the uh, the the face of that because he was a guy who got 25 starts last year. Uh, you expected him to take a step forward. I've made this reference on more than one occasion that um, I look at Dunning in the same category that I look at. Uh, on the position player side, Adolis Garcia and Nathaniel Lowe, both those guys took step forwards this year um, after significant playing time last year and exposure. Last year was a experience year. This year was supposed to be a growth year. Both those guys took step forwards. I don't think you can say the same um, with, with any real tangible evidence about Dunning. The numbers are all really similar to last year. Um, and, uh, there are there, there are some for for me there have been some troublesome trends mostly that I think even when Dane has been given I think I think Dane has struggled to find the balance between um, when he's got to be aggressive and when he can kind of navigate his way through a lineup a little bit I'm sure I'm oversimplifying that a little bit but let's just go back to Sunday in Boston. Uh, given a two-run lead in the first inning in a game, the Rangers really needed a win to salvage a game out of that that series. Um, goes back out there, and he just left meatball after meatball over the middle of the plate in the first inning. Two-run lead became a 4-2 deficit very quickly. Um, I think there were four balls hit in the first inning over 100 miles an hour. It's just not – that's a situation from 30,000 feet it looks like, okay, guy says, all right, I've got a lead. I can go out and just throw strikes, pump strikes in there. I don't want to walk anybody. Well, you've also got to throw quality strikes. You've got to execute them. You can't throw elevated sinkers uh, over the middle of the zone because these are professional hitters and they're going to, they're, they're going to crush them. And so that's the, that's the real thing that I think the Dane has got to work on uh, going forward is finding that balance between um, what constitutes aggressiveness, but what also constitutes executing uh, his pitches. I, I will just say that the line that I've used with Rangers personnel and the line that they've often echoed back to me is when you're you're talking about pitching progress, it's not necessarily linear. So you don't necessarily see results in terms of uh, incremental increases necessarily in ERA and strikeouts and all of that. Uh, but what is significant is Dane pitched, I believe it was 114 innings last year. He's going to push 150 this year. So he's continued to push the innings up. And if there's a progress point there, it's that. Uh, but in terms of performance, it's hard to pick anything out where you can say Dane Dunning has done a significantly better job of this in 2022 than he did in 2021. Glenn Otto started uh, on Tuesday night in, in Houston. Uh, his hometown, um, and I thought the the game was pretty much indicative of the things that Glenn has got to do if he wants to hold a rotation spot this at any time in the future. And as we sit here, for me, the ideal situation for the Rangers would be to have Otto and Dunning competing for the number five spot next year with the loser – uh, going to AAA and being your first depth option, and we'll get to other depth options later. But 
what Glenn Otto needs to do is, listen, he leads the American League in walks per nine innings. Doesn't have the stuff to overcome that. Doesn't have the strikeout stuff to overcome that. Not only that, he's also he also leads the league, or well, he's second, third. Sorry, there's a two-way tie for first. Uh, but he's he's hit 11 batters. Uh, so you take the 56 walks he's issued, the 11 batters he's hit, uh, the handful of wild pitches, and the fact that base runners are 16 out of 18 against him in stolen bases, and the guy has given up 87 free bases. And when you don't have over overpowering stuff or a a real defined out pitch, you just can't afford to do that. He leads, he's tied for the league lead when you calculate walks, hit batters, wild pitches, and stolen bases in that category I call free bases. He's given up 87. So has Houston's Framber Valdez. You know what the difference is? Framber Valdez has done it in 170 innings. Otto's done it in 108. Um, and Framber's got Framber's got a big breaking ball that he can just rely on when he gets in a real jam. So um, these are the these are these are little elements that a guy who doesn't have overpowering stuff and auto stuff. I'm not going to say he's just a, uh, a a below average fastball guy. He's got about an average fastball, just maybe on the border on the bottom border of that. But he's got adequate enough stuff. He just doesn't have a really defined breakout out pitch, and so that kind of guy has to do the other things around the game well. He has to field the ball well. He has to hold runners well. He has to not give up free bases. And so that's what Glenn is going to have to do uh, if he wants to have a rotation spot next year. Cole Reagans is going to start tonight, Wednesday night, as I tape this, record this, Zoom this. I'm, I'm recording it on Zoom. He's returning from the, from the IL. And quite frankly, look, it's been a very good year for Cole. Uh, to come back from the two Tommy John surgeries, missing the pandemic year, uh, and reach the big leagues this year, that's that's significant progress. But I don't know what I can tell you that he has done well versus poorly, because I just don't think he's had enough starts in the big leagues to make a, a real, sig- uh, real well-stated case. The most important thing I can say is now you when you start looking at depth options for 2023, and if the Rangers believe that they will contend in 2023, and make no mistake, Chris Young has not changed the timeline. He still believes the, the window for this team opens in 2023. If you look at their lineup, uh, certainly their lineup is 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 passable for contenders. It may not it may not have quite the sexiness factor of a uh, of a Julio Rodriguez or a Jordan Alvarez, but it certainly would that group of four at the top of Simeon Seeger, Lowe, Garcia, it's certainly formidable. Uh, you add Josh Young to that, uh, which I think will happen sometime in the next couple of days. Uh, Jonah Hine has demonstrated that he is a frontline catcher, even though he's faded a little bit here late. Now all of a sudden you're six deep. Certainly Leody Tavares has given you every indication that he can be a regular player. Now you're looking at a seven, a seven, a seven man deep lineup with maybe two, two holes. One of those holes being at DH, which I expect to be filled by a, a healthy Mitch Garber next year. So this should be a, a lineup that is formidable enough to score runs and stay in competition with the other contenders in the American league West next year. The pitching is again, we go back to the pitching and that's where it's weak. But if the Rangers want to contend next year, they better not just address the starting rotation at the big league level. They need to make sure that they've got numerous depth options to fill in those holes when they're needed. They can't have any more of the bullpen games that they've had. They're one in 10 in those this year. Just simply haven't had a chance. Um, So that's where the loser of the auto dunning battle next year, hopefully would be a number five starter in a big league rotation. But in a contending rotation, he's a guy who's going to have to get his chance when somebody either struggles or gets hurt. I think Cole Reagans fits in that mix. Uh, I I think that the real, the most significant disappointment throughout the minor league system probably this year has been that Cole Wynn has not taken a step forward at AAA. Now, you can say 
this. He's pitched all year at AAA. Um, he's had some trouble there. But if he takes this year, learns from the things that that, that have gone wrong, and it's, it, it's been spotty control and command, uh, and I think that there's been some loss of confidence as the year has progressed. He gets away from this year, processes the stuff, which I think Cole is 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 good at, um, and comes back next year with a fresh slate. Maybe all of a sudden, here's a guy, second year AAA, boom, uh, big step forward. Then all of a sudden, if you add him to the mix, now you're talking about a, a more legitimate pool. Um, you add to the fact Jack Leiter has not had a great debut year in 2022. And I think there was maybe some very optimistic hope going into his first professional year that by the end of 2022, the Rangers would be thinking, oh, you know, should Leiter get a couple of starts in the major leagues before the end of this year? Well, he's not come that fast. Um, he's he, he has made significant progress in the second half of the season. Um but he's not come that fast. And so I don't think you're going to go to 2023, which would have been the best case scenario, I think, initially, for the Rangers thinking Jack Leiter is going to contend for a rotation spot uh, in 2023. But I do think that he could come to camp next year, could put up some nice numbers in the first half of the season, uh, and then put himself in position to be a call-up uh, late in the year. Listen, Houston just called up Hunter Brown, uh, did a great job against the Rangers. They're going to need some young starters to step in at some point next year, and it doesn't always have to be at the uh, on opening day. So if Leiter, a, a Leiter, another guy who I think is, is really smart and is really processing the things he's gone through this year, he's made progress with learning how to get his – how to stop spraying his fastball. Certainly his breaking ball is world-class. Uh, I think that come next year, he could be in a position where by the middle of the season, now you are starting to think about, well, if we, if, if we have a need, we can go to Jack Leiter rather than a bullpen game or rather than starting Kohei Arihara. It's a big difference. Owen White will be in that mix as well. I, um, I would not rule out the possibility of Owen White if he's healthy uh, all of next year, certainly being a guy who could get starts in the big leagues before the end of the year. Uh, I'd feel even better about that if he hadn't had this little um, issue towards the end of the year that's, that's taken him out of the rotation at AA uh, for about a month. But uh, listen, he gets back, he pitches a, couple months in in double a next year maybe the uh, a month or two in in triple a and he could be on the horizon there as well you also add to that guys like cody bradford and zach kent zach kent just got a triple a promotion to round rock these are guys who have stuff that that profiles as big league pitchers um are they big league pitchers I don't know. I know that I was when I saw Zach Kent at Class A last year. It was as good a minor league start as I've seen um, by any pitcher. I thought the breaking ball was was stellar. Um, he's he's a hard hard worker, and he's the kind of guy as a ninth round draft pick out of college that you would hope becomes one of those overachievers that you kind of need to have out of a draft to say this was a this was a winner of a draft. Um, so you take that group, if you take the loser of Otto Dunning, Reagans, Wynn, Leiter, White, Bradford, Zach Ken, and, and let's just throw in the possibility of, of Ricky Benasco, who I think could move fast next year um, after one full year uh, of getting back from Tommy John. All of a sudden you're talking about eight potential uh, depth options. And that is about what a contender needs. If you're going to navigate a full season, you need a, a starting rotation that hopefully stays fairly healthy. But inevitably, there are going to be injuries and there are going to be guys who go through slumps. And you better have at least another rotation and a half worth of options there to give you an opportunity to not go into long, long skids. Look, this is what we just saw with the Rangers here. 
if Martin Perez, if Mar if they don't win a Martin Perez start, then they're looking at a five game losing streak or longer. Um, and the reason that the, the last losing streak just reached nine games, Martin Perez had one bad start and they didn't score any runs in his next start. And all of a sudden that's two thrown turns through the rotation and the Rangers were on the verge of looking at a double digit loss, losing streak. Um, but they, they won last night on Tuesday night. So that, I, you know, I was far too serious today. Like I was making points and stuff. Um, I've got to work on that. I, 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 I need to, I need to be more humorous for you people. And not just in the way that I look. I, I realize I look like a giant thumb or an egg. But uh, I'm here to try and bring a little smile to your day. Also, a whole lot of Rangers information. Hope you enjoyed it. Please, please, this is me speaking from the heart. Please subscribe. It's really the only way that I know that I have any value in the world anymore. Um... But you can subscribe on the YouTube page, no cost. You can like the video. You can ask me questions. Hopefully, uh, we will continue to do these um, for, through the rest of the regular season every week. Haven't come up with a schedule yet for the off season, but I would I would expect that they'd be you know once every ten days, once every two weeks uh, during the off season, unless there's breaking news and we hear it, the Rangers News Network. Beep, 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 beep. We'll break in with uh, with special editions of this week in Rangers baseball, y'all. Until then, so long, everybody. Good video.